Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Ugh, lose my voice a little bit. I am Jay Lee, this is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After Season 5, Episode 15. Okay, if you have not done so already, please come over to subscribe to my channel and then come over Jay Bird. Jay Bird. Dun 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 dun. And all that goodness and stuff. I can't sing too high, whatever. Um, please do not forget to like this video, to comment in the comment section. You can hit the share button to share it on your social media. You can also follow me on IG and our Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore corner. Okay, we always want you to inhale and to exhale. Okay, to inhale, to exhale. Okay, to relax, to relate, to release, and to center yourself and anyone around you. Okay, let's get this started. Okay, I didn't feel like pulling up pictures of each couple. We know who they are. We know who they are. Okay, Larissa, Eric out here like like Larissa died. Oh my God, Larissa is so timid. You know, I gotta take care of her like she's a child. Okay, she needs every little thing. I'm like she ain't. She just had surgery that day. Okay, it has not even been 24 hours, whatever. Like, I feel like I'm a father now because I, she just needs everything from me. Okay, I haven't even thought about sex at all. She just had surgery, Eric. Calm the fuck down, okay? okay we then see two months later and Eric... Our relationship is so much better now. She's so much happier now. We're great, 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 great. And there's a friends is coming over to see her new face, okay? And we see the new face. I have a couple of different pictures of it or whatever. This is Larissa now. Well, at least at that point. The hair is great. Her lips have settled. Okay, she doesn't have whatever she was getting before them. Her lips look puffed up and stupid. The new nose looks good. It does, but to me, she looks like a typical person who goes and gets work done. Um, but she still looks good. At least she did not have bad surgery. I still feel like them boobs are too big for her body, okay? But that's okay, because that's on her or whatnot, okay? So, she also was close about the face. Bam, okay? So, the nose, again, it looks fine. Her lips look better. Her lips look like they did when she first came here. They're just a little bit more plump, but it's a perfect addition to what it was supposed to be and whatnot, okay? Um, what's this picture? So that's her sitting down. Again, I think those boobs are just team too much, okay? But her face looks great. I mean, her eye looks a bit twitchy, okay? But that could be because it's bright, I'm not sure. The weave looks good. I mean, Eric may really have some money because at least she looks better than she did when she was with Coty. Okay, and then lastly, this is her now, okay? So that is the before when she first came here with Colt. And this is her now. So she did have some lipo done. Um, we know that she's lost a little bit more weight because her face is very, very, her face is more um, slim now. And, but them, them boobs are huge. Okay, they're just huge, huge boobs huge poops or whatever so again you know she's like i'm happier now you know i do feel more like myself and it's again i just don't want her to go get nothing else done okay you look fine now leave everything be done no more noses no more lips no more nothing and the only thing she can do now is she if she wants her boobs smaller but everything else she looks fine leave it be or whatnot now they chit chat and jaw jacking up whatever and she brings up how now her and eric share a room they're no longer sleeping in separate rooms however the room they're sharing they still sleep in separate beds she says it's like we're cats you know cats like to be together but you know but alone like leave me be or whatnot i mean i get it, it i don't know you know like she said how her green card is still processing or whatever and neither of them has any idea what they'll do if her green card is denied and she has to go back to is she from to brazil why ain't she said shit about her children? Where is her kids? Girl, I could not. I'm saying now she feel like we can get married someday. He like, um, I don't know about that. But again, we have to tell all next week. It's a three part tell all, so we'll see what else is going on with them. Okay, we then have Colt. Colt and Debbie sitting around or whatever, and Debbie feel like Colt is heartbroken. 
you know, with him and Jess being over, you know, he's he's heartbroken. He is not the same, you know, person he used to be. You know what I'm saying? And, Son, you have not been, you know, acting yourself, whatever. It seemed like, you know, you're trying to keep your feelings inside. Well, Mom, if there are some things I just don't want to talk to you about, okay? Not right now. And I'm like, well, what's going on right here? She's like, well, look. Let me be honest and frank, okay? I feel like that Jess was using you to get a green card, okay? And that was our whole point in being with you. And I think that's the truth or whatever. Mom, you know what I'm saying? Look, I should have not started dating her this soon. I should have waited, you know, got some more time to be over, over Larissa, you know what I'm saying? I keep doing the things over and over and over and messing up. And that stops now, okay? I want to do things differently, okay? ASAP and whatnot. Okay, that's fine, son. But just know I will always defend you against these women and stuff or whatever. Even if I'm old and I'm 100 years old, I will always tell you what I think. Unless you tell me to back off, okay? Mom, you know, I just feel like the way you treat me as an adult and as a man is the reason my girlfriends and you always be beefing. They feel like... Your competition, because you be washing my clothes, cooking my food, cleaning up after me. So they feel like, you know, you are their, their challenge to be in my life, okay? And that's why it's always a competition between you and them. Well, ain't that about it, bitch. Look, look, I don't be up here blaming me for your failed ass. Well, like, I'm paraphrasing on this stuff. Don't be blaming me for your failed ass relationship. But she was upset that she felt like he was saying the reasons I have issues with my girlfriends because you treat me like we're dating. Okay? And so she didn't. And you're my son. Okay? I treat you like a man. Okay, I, what do you what do you mean? I'm saying I'm not the reason. I'm not to blame for this shit. And then you know I won't cook, I won't clean, I won't do laundry ever again. Okay, You're like mom, look, I think I need to get to know you. Okay, I know you. I, I just I don't know you the way. She's like, no, get to know yourself first. Okay, then think about getting to know me. I feel like how can you live with someone your whole damn life and you not know them? You know your mama. You just don't want to accept who she is, okay? But I digress. Anyway, you're like, I'm happy we had this conversation because now at least it's out in the open that she knows I want to be able to date women without having them feel like she is their competition. We'll move out, okay? They won't see your mama make your bed or cook your food or do your laundry if y'all was not in the same goddamn house, okay? Period. Get look, move to an apartment complex or to a condo. Y'all can live next door to one another if you want her this close to you. But get out of the same house together, okay? Because I'm like this weird ass mother son relationship. It's just getting weird and creepy. Next up, we have Angela and Michael. Okay. <sighs> anyway, you know she is. Well, oh, I forgot. It's not about them. So she found out her mom was unresponsive, was you know, brought to the hospital. Her mom was now in ICU. And she was able to book a flight. Um, but she's waiting to go to the airport. And she feels like maybe it's my fault, you know, because can't nobody take care of her how I take care of her. So maybe it's my fault because I left. We know it's not your fault. Her mama was already pretty sickly before she left. So it's not as if she was in good health and gen- and then just, you know, went down here and she was already you know what I'm saying little bit little bit little bit little bit so you know what I'm saying was what it was or what not so my like you know it just hurts me to see you know my wife leaving because I don't know when it will be the next time I'll see her in person you know what I'm saying so I'm just oh so sad they hug and kiss and hug and kiss in the, in, the, in the airport and then she goes home now she gets home and she goes you know to the hospital her mom is not responsive okay but she's alive and she's just happy to be able to at least see her mom and talk to her mom and you know and be there for her mom or whatever we then see you know like 10 days later her mom passed away <sighs> look losing a parent is absolutely heartbreaking like i don't wish that pain on anyone you know so y'all know i still have my days when i'm just you know crying about my father passed away and that was five years ago almost yeah five years ago because it'd be six years in february but not but so i i understand how hard this is for her and may her mom rest in peace 
However, Angela has acted a complete ass ever since we've known her on the show. So it's hard for me to really connect and feel sympathy for her. I just have an understanding of what she is going through. And that's really it. It's like... It's like when Trump brother passed away. And no one really felt bad for Trump. We felt bad for everyone except Trump. You know what I'm saying? We felt bad for everybody else. Because we don't like that man. And I'm like, I felt like I was sad. I was, I felt sadness for everybody but Angela. You know what I'm saying? Even though, again, I understand that. But I feel like people who are horrible people, I can't waste my sympathy on them when on any other given day, they are a horrible person. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're a mean per Like, Angela is a mean-spirited person and individual and has this, you know, white privilege in her mind so that I don't have any sympathy for. So, again, you know, may her mom rest in peace. You know, the grandkids, you know, condolence. I just, girl, I just can't. I, I, I cannot or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And we do see her face down with Michael or whatever, you know, asking, like, when will you be able to come to America? Like, well, you know, the lawyer said it would be about nine to ten months. And, you know, well, I just feel like, you know, your place is here with me or whatever. <sighs> She's still on the I'm a, I'm a married person in America. I have the right to have my husband here. You should have married somebody in America. And that's it. Liz and Andre. Um, So, Charlie's still drunk. Don't ask my father for shit. Okay. Do something, Andre. Do something, okay. On all the and he drunk or whatever. He was drunk and now he dance around. Na 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 all around or whatever. As if he did not just give a whole cuss out speech to the groom. Girl, I could not. So Andre goes and gets him or whatever. Takes him outside for a little chit chat. Or oh, you you wanna fight me, Andre? You wanna fight me in Moldova? Okay, you wouldn't fight me in the States. I'm looking like he is really Wasted, okay, and I feel like that's the true Charlie, okay. Anyway, you know, Andre was like, Look, we're not gonna fight, I don't want no bullshit. You know, what I'm saying we're not gonna, we're gonna leave this shit alone tonight, okay. We're not gonna do nothing tonight, we're gonna leave, we're gonna have a good ass time, just calm the fuck down. Well, fine, fine. And he walks, still walks away drunk. Now, he brings up how Andre, you know, is, you know, full of shit. He's using my dad for money. Now, Andre brings up how the wedding only costs like 30 grand, okay? Compared to the amount that I thought they were trying to spend, 30 grand isn't a lot considering they all flew over to Moldova to do it or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Chuck paid for the wedding. Now, Andre also brings up Charlie acting dumb as if his daddy did not pay for his wedding. So, what's the big deal? Daddy paid for your wedding too, so what's the video? Now, Chuck say, I didn't pay for the wedding for Andre. I paid for the wedding for my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Because she wanted this wedding here with her husband. So, what did I pay for for that damn reason? Now, Charlie, who's been a complete drunken ass idiot the whole time, still saying Andre ain't shit this and he ain't he. Y'all stealing from my daddy. Okay? It's some but All this stuff. Everyone sees him being just a complete ass or whatever. Chill out, chill out, chill out. But he's drunk. He's drunk and he's dumb. And, you know, Liz is upset. She's crying. And we see Andre just, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. It's okay. And he consoled her, you know, because he loves his wife or whatever. We then see Andre go over to Chuck and chit chat, you know what I'm saying? And like a man, surprisingly, he apologizes to Chuck. For how he has acted in the past, okay? You know, and Chuck, like, look, I just want you to know that I want to feel appreciated for all the things that I have done for the family. Like, I do a lot. And you just never seem appreciative for the amount of things that I do, okay? For you, your wife, and, and, and whoever else and whatnot. And Andre admits, I've been wrong. You know, I've been rude. You know, you've done a lot for the family. And I know that you care for me, my wife, and my daughter. And I want to start to be better and do better and have us have a better dynamic. I do really want that. Okay? So, I wholeheartedly apologize. It's the one time I think I've ever felt like Andre was being completely honest. And taking, you know, account for the role and the part that he's played in the, the discourse between Liz's family 
and him. Now we now see that Chuck, not Chuck, the Charlie is a complete asshole fool. So you can understand why Andre might not be so receptive, receptive to him. But I digress or whatever. Chuck, however, accepts the apology. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I am only one person, though. You know, you I may accept it, but you have to still deal with the people who have issue with you or whatever. And so we do see on the inside or whatever, as Charlie's still going around, and it's stupid. It's just stupid shit or whatever. And they're like, you know, don't do that. Don't ruin the wedding. Oh, my God. He said we're drunk wherever else. And we see Andre with the It's just like, you know what I'm saying? I made peach your daddy. You know what I'm saying? I can't make peach your siblings right now if they don't keep acting how they act. You know what I'm saying? But I want to have peace because I love you. She's like, oh, my God, I love you. It was cute. It was cute. And maybe it's because he was with his family. And he felt comfortable enough to, you know, let his guard down or whatever. I don't know. Um, and since this this is the season finale, he could be an asshole in two weeks. We're not sure. But again, congrats to them, too. Okay. Then we have Kalani and Asuelu. Okay. So, they're on their way to see his family because his family's leaving and whatnot. And now Kalani, like, Kalani, like, I don't really care to... See your sister, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we don't like each other. And we not, like, that's not going to change today. So, I just feel like, like, she probably wouldn't even want to say bye to me. So, but I'm going to go and see. I'm going to go and see. So, they get there or whatever in the hotel. And they're like, okay. Hey, hey. They all hugging and whatever. And they're like, oh, where's, where's Tammy? Who was the mean bitch, okay? And the mama was like, oh, you know. She already left. You know what I'm saying? I tried to tell her to stay, but you know, she just, you know, he like, don't be, she said, don't be upset with Joseph. Like, she loves you. She just mad or whatever. Man, fuck Tammy. Go on, head on somewhere, Tammy. We don't care about you. Not today. Now, the mom was nicer. I, I feel like the mom was nicer when Tammy isn't around because the other daughter who happens to be, um, hearing impaired. May just not be as as rah 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 as Tammy is or whatever. So the mom is a little bit more nice. I'm saying she thanks them both for coming, for bringing the kids to say bye, whatever, and even tells them like take care of the kids. So I'm like, well, last time you said fuck them kids. I need some money or whatnot. But I guess again she's changed her tune or whatever, and she tells honey, you know, take care of Swaylu because he's my son and I miss him. She's like, okay, that's good. She's like, okay, and before we go to the airport, I need some money. They was like, the fuck did she just say? After all the shit we've been through, she wants some goddamn money. She's like, oh, I'm just joking, huh? And she, I'm like, okay, I guess it's funny. Anyway, so they then leave. You know, the parents go to the airport, and it was what it was. We then see later Kalani and Sweetie Lou goes out to eat. Okay, to kind of celebrate them. You just been a couple and being in a better place. She's like, because we've been to therapy or whatever. And we have been doing, like, the little family meetings or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? We are in a much better place. And then Aswelu brings up how, you know, since he found out that she wanted a divorce, he's been working hard to make their relationship work because he does not want to divorce um, Kalani. And then, you know, they then do some little homework of writing down what they think the other one's role should be at home. Now, Swaylu writes, like, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, Swaylu, should do my laundry. I should wash my dishes. I should, basically saying he should do things that's, that's, that, that's his. But not, so like, I should wash the kids. I should help. He was all what he should do. And when he put down stuff that Kalani should do, it was, she should do all her own stuff. Plus wash the kids. Plus wash the kids clothes. Like it was like her stuff plus the kids stuff plus like house stuff or whatever. And she's like no like we need to both be doing it. Like we need to both handle the kids. We need to both do how We need to both do all these things. Like it can be 50, 50. He says okay. We can do that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do. We can do that. It's fine or whatever. But we So they're in a good space. Okay. Good old space. And she said I feel like we're in a good place to you know get into a better place or whatnot. Three months later at this point in time covid didn't hit you know what I'm saying? So they've been stuck with each other for three months in the house and right now the marriage is not so good okay so we see her talking to her mom 
And, you know, she brings up how, you know, he's always gone somewhere or whatever. I feel like he's trying to, he's trying to catch COVID because he goes out, he plays volleyball, he goes out with his friends. And then he'll lie about where he was. And I'm like, do you want to get our kids sick? I said, you do realize this is the same man who told you, let's go to Samoa when it was a measles outbreak and y'all had children. And children can die from the measles. So I don't think he even cares about COVID. Because who knew? No one really knew much about it, girl. But it was, I'm not surprised that he didn't adhere to keep your ass at home and don't go nowhere. He was trying to go to Samoa during a measles outbreak that were killing children. He wanted to bring your children to that. So I'm not confused at all or whatever. And she brings up how they got into a fuss or a fight last night or whatever and because, you know, she told him how, you know, you should probably leave. You should go and stay with your mama. Okay, and she then booked him a flight, a one-way flight <laughs> to Seattle to go stay with his mama. And I'm looking like, mm, mm, mm. Now, she's like, I think we just need a break, you know what I'm saying, um, from each other. Like, I'm just, she's just not helpful at all, mama, you know what I'm saying, and I don't think we can work. I just don't. I get her point because the Sway Lu is like a fucking kid. He's a child. He's a child, child, child. But I also feel like there is no male figure besides her dad who is going to actively teach him how to grow the fuck up in America. They treat him like he should know he needs to grow up. He needs someone to show him how to do it. And they're not going to be patient enough to feed that to his childlike brain, okay? But I digress. Anyway, at this point, she's like, I don't want to be married anymore. I'm over it or whatever. I, I look, I've been the only one trying. I keep trying and trying to wait for him to change, and he just won't do it. And I'm like, I just want you to be happy, and I see that you're not happy, whatever. You know, Asuelu is just not the one. Your daughter got pregnant and married a stranger. Your daughter went on, on vacation got knocked up by someone who was fun for a couple of days on vacation. He was never marriage material. She married him because she was pregnant. You can't be upset with that man for being exactly who he was. Anyway, we do see, you know, people like, you know, I was just going to play volleyball, you know what I'm saying? And I was being very, very careful. When I went, I'm saying, I don't want to leave my family, but Kalani is mad at me, I'm saying, and I'm just, I can't see my, it'll be sad with me not being around my kids. And we see flies off to whatever, girl, team too much or whatnot. Okay, and then lastly, Tanya and Sinjin, girl, I don't get no fucks about these two. You know, they getting ready to leave or whatever, and he telling his family, I don't really want to go. I really want to stay here. I don't think me and her will make it or whatever. It's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Talking to his mama, dad, and his sister. And they're like, yeah, you know, we don't, we don't know either. We then see him and Tanya sitting around and chit chat, and it's the same conversation. I don't know if I want to go back. I think I want to stay here. I don't know if we can make it because we don't be married so fast. Like we, we move too quick. I don't know. Sinjin has been saying the exact same shit all season. I don't know if I want to be married. It's so so hard. I think I want to be back in 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 uh, South Africa, whatever. It's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Because they didn't decide to come back and stay together. Girl, I don't have time for you motherfuckers. I'm over it. <laughs> because I feel like Tanya and Sinjin are either faking for the TV show. Or they they both love torture. Because ain't no man I'm married to can keep telling me he don't know if he wants to be married to me. And I'm, I'm going to keep letting him say that. And while I'm sitting around scared, he's going to leave me. I don't want to leave me. I don't want to go. I don't want to do. Bitch, leave him first. Okay. Okay. Anyway, that was it. I'm done. Peace.